just gonna let you know that you may or may not hear some meowing in this video. Got a new friend sitting right there. Hey, what's up you guys, it's Helen, and this week I wanted to do something a bit school related for uh, my monthly book video. Yes, I know, why am I talking about school? I graduated in May, I'm not in school anymore. Well, this actually has to do with uh, some books that I've read in school that I think are still pretty cool reads now. I don't have a lot, but I do have some that I would like to talk to you about today. In addition to talking about why they're good to read in school, I'll also talk about how it's good to read these books after you've graduated or moved on, or after you've, basically after you're done reading them for class in your free time. So without further ado, here are some books that you might have read in school that you should probably hang on to. Just saying. So starting right off the bat with alphabetical order, we're going to talk about Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Now, this is one that I was actually really familiar with the story before I even read it for my, uh, I think it was AP Literature class. I am a huge fan of the film starring Matthew McFadden and uh, Keira Knightley. And, um, actually, I really just, I just bought it on DVD the other day. But, I think it's really important to read the book and not just go by the movie because, um, the movie doesn't quite pick up on Jane Austen's wit. And she is so very witty. I mean, like, the opening line of the book alone is, It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. Um, as someone who has read um, a few other of Jane Austen's books, I think this is probably still my favorite. Um, I think it's a wonderful commentary, and the fact that a woman became such a successful author um, way back in, like, the early 1800s is a huge deal. Um, and she's influenced so many romance, romantic movies and romantic comedies today. I mean, you know, uh, Bridget Jones's Diary is just the tip of the iceberg. Definitely read this if you want more Jane Austen. Next is a book that I read right before and during uh, the time I went to England, and that is A Traveler's History of England by Christopher Daniel. This is actually a really uh, interesting, easy to read, um, base, well, really, was, it is A Traveler's History of England. It goes through um, the basic era. It basically covers everything from hunter-gatherers to Romans, and it has a nice little, um, uh, index in the back, and it also has, like, uh, selected reading, uh, selected cathedrals and priories, um, I believe, and New York Minster is there. Um, I should also point out, he also wrote a book called The Traveler's History of York, which I read specifically because I was going to York. Um, both of them are very, very good, so if you are a fan of all things England and you want to know a little bit more about uh, the history of the country, then by all means, check this out. Next up is a book that I actually read for two different classes, two years apart. Um, and that would be Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott, um, who I actually had the pleasure of meeting. And she did sign it. I'm so excited. Um, so I read this for my AP Language and Composition class when I was in 11th grade, and then I read it again for my Creative Writing class when I was in 12th grade. And I've reread it a couple times since. Um, basically, it's not really a manual on writing so much as it is Anne Lamott's uh, thoughts about her process. And there's a lot of really good advice in there for writers. Um, I think I make it a plan to reread it every year just to um, make myself feel a little bit better. She talks a lot about um, the getting ready to write, having the environment to write, being not being afraid to write shitty first drafts. I'm so sorry to all the children who watch my videos. She gives really good advice and she's also really, really funny. Next up, again, a book that I read uh, for two different classes, although a bit further apart. Um, this is Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. I read this of my own choosing for a project in AP Language and Composition in high school, and I also read it for my uh, religion class that I took um, as part of my studies in Britain. Um, so that would be my junior year. It's a very interesting take on um, Christianity or what it is or how to explain it. And it's very interesting to hear C.S. Lewis's thoughts because he was an atheist who uh, converted later on. So basically, um, just his um, um, musings on Christianity. Um, and definitely, if you started off uh, on Lewis when you were a kid with the Narnia books, this is um, a natural progression, I think, because of the Christian themes that are so in the Narnia books. Um, so to really just kind of go and like hear specifically through his voice, um, his thoughts on his faith. This is a controversial pick. It's always on the list of banned books every single year. And that is 
The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. Um, this is one that I read for AP Literature and Composition in high school, and it actually ended up being a question on the AP exam. This is an interesting book because I think it's very well written. Um, I think Holden Caulfield is a little shit, um, but... <laughs> um, no, it is very well written, and for the time, I think it captures um, the, I don't know, the youthful energy or the youthful discontent. And it's very interesting to read it as a teenager because you are so close in age to um, Holden. Would I make the same decisions as him? Nope. I think it's like one teenager's experience, and if for nothing else, you need to read this because it's on the band list, and you know, you're so cool if you read this stuff off the band list. Apparently, To Kill a Mockingbird is on the band list now. Hmm. But yes, definitely go check this out. And finally, who hasn't read Shakespeare in high school? I read a few Shakespeare plays, but of course his most famous one is Romeo and Juliet, and if you can't tell by the bookmark, I'm actually rereading it again now. And I read it twice. I read it once when I was in seventh grade, a little bit young, and once when I was in ninth grade. And when I read it in high school, I actually had the No Fear Shakespeare version, um, which kind of looks like this. Uh, here, this is actually the version of King Lear, which I also read in high school, but I think Romeo and Juliet is a bit more important. But basically, this one has uh, the original text on one side and the vernacular or modern text on the other. Now, you can do that, but I think after you've read it once that way, um, you're good to go with this version, which uh, just has the original text along with some footnotes to help you kind of understand what's going on. One more reason to read it now, um, as opposed to doing it in class, is because you can now pay extra attention to uh, different staging instructions. I took a theater class and we uh, actually staged a scene um, more or less in a Shakespeare style way. We set up some boards and um, how the scenes were staged. Um, if you do get this particular version, the Bantam classic version, it has, um, you know, all these have like introductions as to what they mean. Um, but uh, these different ones, they do have introductions into how Romeo and Juliet is portrayed on stage and on film, and I think it would do you really, really well to read these. And then I think there's a section in the back about Shakespeare's sources. So definitely read Romeo and Juliet. Romeo, in the first act of this play, I've discovered is more or less of a fedora, pining after Rosaline. And then, you know, within two seconds, just kind of switches. But it's interesting to read it from the from the perspective of an adult who's not in class. And actually, I could say this about all of these books. It is interesting to read all of these books when you don't have to read them for class, which is why um, some books, when you're in college and all you have to buy a ton, if you want to like sell them back, then cool. But if there are some that you really want to hang on to, there are certainly some more on my bookshelf that I didn't have time to get to that you should definitely uh, check out. But it is important, I think, to read like more or less um, the classroom reading, um, especially the readings that you had in high school. Maybe check out some copies of that from the library later. Um, things that I read in high school, like The Crucible, um, Rape of the Lock, um, King Lear, obviously. Um, it's, it's interesting to read those outside of a classroom setting. So I highly, highly encourage it, and you might gain some new things and be able to think more critically about it now that you've read it once before and can read it again. That is this week's video on classroom reading that I still enjoy and recommend you read later. Um, if you want to see more of my videos, I just posted last week about my favorite film scores. That went on forever. Um, you can also check out um, some videos on my second channel. I'm going to post a gymnastics vlog later today. Um, because I love gymnastics quite a bit and Worlds was last week and it was great as, and as always you can subscribe here on my main channel for new videos every single week you can subscribe to my second channel you can uh, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, Tumblr to know what I'm getting up to when I'm not filming and um, that's all so uh, thanks for watching um, remember to keep living awesome lives and I'll see you soon bye